Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of Brother Nature by Robert Llewellyn. So, uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. It's going to be kind of reading vloggy, because I've only started it, really. I'm on page 84 of about... 370. Robert Llewellyn is the guy who played Crichton in Red Dwarf, which is one of my favourite TV shows. He's an actor, presenter and writer. Let's get to the blurb. Dane reads. Professor Nina Nash, leading cybernetic specialist, is too thin, too tidy and, for men her own age, just too damn clever. Nina only, ha Nina only has one problem she's never understood, but it's very big. It's called Jason and he's her brother. Jason Nash is a dot commoner with an exceptional skill at wasting other people's money. Saved from extinction by a group of seemingly benign American scientists, he enlists Big Sis to help in a brave new project. Using a tiny microchip inserted into Jason's central nervous system, she starts to understand him. Unfortunately, the scientists have another agenda, one which will change both their lives forever. Um, Jason is a dick, by the way. I don't like him as a character. But, I, you know, you can still enjoy a book even if you don't like one of the main characters. He definitely feels real, he's just not likeable. So we learned that uh, they grew up in Bourne End, which is just round the corner from me. The place I used to work was in, uh, I used to play, work in a place called Wuburn Green, which was, you know, a mile from Bourne End. And this is like the kind of thing that I imagine. I don't know why I do, I just have the kind of brain that does that. He smiled and allowed his very tired eyes to close. He imagined a car bomb going off outside the flat, the windows being blown in, glass flying everywhere. He imagined the screams of the injured as he rushed about trying to help people. Then he imagined looking up into the night sky as it became brighter than day. A huge meteor was heading for the middle of London. He imagined the impact, the shattering blast, the whole city flapping like a giant sheet, everything destroyed. He smiled as he imagined his body being smashed to pulp by vast chunks of flying building. He turned on one side and visualised the meteor hitting the sea and a vast tidal wave a mile and a half high approaching the city skyline. He could see individual people trying to swim up the inconceivable wall of water as it crushed everything in its path. There were tanks charging down the streets of West London, followed by hordes of murderous troops killing everyone in their path. He slowly fell asleep. I'm not convinced about this as well because bearing in mind when this was written, I mean this was published in what, 2000? Something like that. Um, 2002, for, yeah, first published 2001. Um, so he writes, uh, motor manufacturers were years behind in tech development. They could easily produce hybrid electric cars that ran for thousands of miles on one battery charge. Having a car that started when you put your hand on the gear shift was so mundane, but it pleased the boys, and the boys were the customers. I don't know, because do we, can we still do that? To be fair, we're talking about hybrid car rather than um, a purely electric one, so maybe. And there's a speech by uh, Sir Brian, who's one of the one of the characters, and he says, uh, We are standing in the doorway of a new period of unfounded human development, where man and machine come together, not letting machine take over, but improving both. We are not building machines so that they can take over the world. We are really building them so that we might better understand ourselves. And that, to me, reminds me a lot of what's happening with things like chat GPT and AI in general, AI and healthcare. It's almost always that the best combination is man and machine together. They tend to put, uh, outperform either humans or machines. Um, somebody in dialogue, they say uh, the word utilizing, which I just hate. I mean, granted, she is like a scientist and works kind of in corporate science, so that word is a bit more common, but never use utilizing when you could just say use. Why do people do? We get this line as well. Uh, he'd been in touch with every major research facility in the world over the previous week, put in many hundreds of hours work. Well, there's only 144 hours in a week. And we get a uh, reference to one of the scientists. He'd worked for IBM on the team that had developed Deep Blue, the computer that beat Boris Spassky in a game of chess. Well, more, more notably, I don't know if he did beat Boris Spassky, I assume he did, but he beat Gary Kasparov, who at the time was the world number one. Um, that was in 1997. That was like the watershed moment for Deep Blue. And this book came out after that. And I like this little bit of dialogue. Jason, where did you actually meet George? George Quinn, asked Jason slightly too quickly. No, George Michael. Who do you think? Of course, George bloody Quinn. We actually get another reference to George Michael a little later on as well, but that line did make me chuckle. And I like this little uh, bit here, in part because I live in High Wycombe, you're going to see why that's important. We need an electron microscope to really see where the malfunction in the design is, said Emma Truva when they sat in the boardroom one day. I can source that, said Jason. That was all there was to it. Her little brother Jason was going to source it, which sounded alarmingly similar to the claim he'd made when he was a kid that he could source pork from the local pig farm for his dad. That episode ended with a family chasing after a living and very vocal pig in the car park of the hotel. Nina getting blamed for leaving the gate open and allowing the animal to disappear up the main road to High Wycombe, never to be seen again. And funnily enough, the town I'm originally from, Tamworth, it is famous for the Tamworth 2, which are two pigs that went on the run from a slaughterhouse and made it into the national news. Someone doesn't know what a latte is? 
which I guess is a sign of the times because these days everybody would know what a latte is. Oh, there's a reference to this computer chip. It can record dreams and possibly replay them, which just made me think of Isaac Asimov's Dreamies. Uh, which then became uh, Program 10 and Program 11 by Bill Holt, very cool vinyl uh, album, one of the first examples of sampling in, in modern music. And I like this, uh, good one Amy, remind me to give you a 68. What's that? When I go down on you and you don't owe me one. So I've now used that, obviously. Um, Biggie Smalls is spelled wrong, it's spelled B-I-G-G-Y, and it, as we all know it should be B-I-G-G-I-E, like my cat. Uh, Jason says he's going to wheeze off the six sugared coffee, but earlier on in the book, he's, he's been, the point has been made that it's five cover, uh, five sugars. Uh, and then Jason does something bad, uh, and he gets taken to the police station uh, in High Wycombe, which I thought was quite cool. Again, my local station. And I thought this was funny, so he ended up in a police cell, and it says he didn't really know what to do. He didn't want to see anyone, even Amy. He didn't want to do anything, so he just stood where he was. So this is the third of the Robert Llewellyn books. He didn't want to do anything, so he just stood where he was. It didn't hurt to stand up, his neck felt a little better. He didn't look at his hands, although he could tell that they were sticky. He tried to ignore them. He wanted to wash, but he knew he'd have to wait. He knew he'd have to wait for a lot of things now. It was all going to be about waiting. Which is true, I've never thought about that, but yes, that's what incarceration is. It's just a big, long wait, you know? So again, just some interesting stuff here on the nature of being imprisoned. Um, as the door closed, he felt a sense of relief. There was something deeply relaxing about being incarcerated. There was nothing he could do, no calls to answer, no emails to respond to, no meetings to attend. But yeah, a reference to the animal rights nutters. Can't believe a word they say. Tofu heads, we call them. It's complete rubbish. Well, I guess I am a tofu head. I am a Guardian reading Wokarati or whatever it was that fucking... Who was that? Was that Pretty Patel? Some UK politician anyway referred to, I think it was the Guardian reading tofu eating wokarati. The end basically, so the, the main character, uh, Nina, Nina? Yeah, Nina, her brother Jason has had to chip him, um, and so has um, Van, whatever his name is, her love interest, Van Missen, Pete Van Missen. Uh, and Van Missen got paralysed and they managed to use a chip in him to make him walk again But he's unable to get and maintain an erection and Jason goes Oh, you could use the data that you recorded from me when I had sex with my girlfriend and she's like great idea Maybe his dick will work again and he's like only problem is it's a bit incestuous because you will be having sex with this man But he will be using all of your brother's moves on you and she goes ahead and does it anyway And then the book ends but yes uh, brother nature by Robert Llewellyn probably Probably a strong three out of five for me. Um, it was okay, it, it delved into some really interesting issues and was possibly like further f future thinking than some of his other books, which have kind of felt dated as soon as I picked them up. Um, but yes, it was a decent enough read. Would I recommend it? Probably not, unless you're a Robert Llewellyn fan or unless the uh, concept really, really takes your fancy. So there we have it, that's what I made of Brother Nature by Robert Llewellyn. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.